Welcome back, everybody, to Overwatch Contenders Europe. There's still more Overwatch around the corner. We did crown our first place, but we still got to find out who got second, third, and fourth. And it'll be the double L's bringing you EXO versus Young and Beautiful. What a lucky audience you are today. Lemon, there's going to be so much Overwatch streaming into your eyeballs and ear holes over the course of this wonderful Friday. It's going to get you nice and pumped for the weekend, but we're going to be starting off in the lower bracket of Europe. Like you said, Exo versus Yab. And it's actually quite a hotly anticipated matchup. These guys kind of have um, opposite stories coming out of season one of Overwatch Contenders Europe. Young and Beautiful kind of fell from grace in the playoffs after a very good group stage uh, or like tournament stage for the first few weeks. Whereas Exo Blavione kind of came out of nowhere and they managed to squeak their way into the playoffs. And then made quite a deep run. I think they got maybe third or fourth overall. I think third. Yeah. I think uh, Obey Alliance, formerly Raspberry Racers, were the ones to slay them in the lower bracket. So it's kind of like Ex Oblivion. They're a team on the up. Young and Beautiful kind of falling from grace. But of course, they have the chance to recapture it right here in our July bracket. You can see in that bracket who Exo want their revenge against. It was Obey Alliance that send them that sent them into the loser's bracket. And if they win this match, they'll be facing them for the potential to clinch the second or third place spot, depending if they win that one. But we're in the lower side. It's the battle for the big bucks. Ex Oblivion facing off against Young and Beautiful, which the Netherlands superstar is uh, from uh, the Overwatch World Cup. Really looking at like Tri-Spear, Jonah, Brucen, etc. All very talented people, but they used to be a team that everyone feared in Contenders Europe, and they've sort of fallen from grace, but they still have a chance to go all the way in the bracket. Well, Kasaurus has had a little bit of a rebuild for Young and Beautiful, trying to make them a little bit more of a fearsome contender, and they actually stole Dance away from Ex Oblivione. Dance was a huge part of Ex Oblivione's resurgence within the, uh, within the playoff bracket. Served them very well, so now it's Dance up against his former teammates in, uh, in Kara, and Rene and Slay, the only, the only three members of Ex Oblivion who do remain, because of course Linu uh, retired and Fi moved over to Comically Large Crosshair in North America. And Fi's been doing pretty good on the Widowmaker. Makes me wonder why it was that Linu was for hit scan for, uh, for Ex Oblivion <laughs> during the last season. I mean, he's really good, but Fi was really surprising me. And speaking of really good, Exo with that third place finish you mentioned from playoffs last season. They're the better seed, they get to pick this first map. And what's cool about this format is you can pick any map, any game type. You don't have to start with control. And sometimes you just want to dodge that chaos. You go right into Junkertown against Young and Beautiful who fought their way through trials to be here. Now we're wondering why Axel would pick this map. It's Sycamore versus Jonah on the Widowmaker, of course, very Widow heavy map. But with the introduction of Genji in this meta, we saw how much of a factor Naga was for Axel when they went up against SMC yesterday, full holding them on this map, I believe. And I think it was Naga and the pressure he applies to Widowmakers that makes Exo really scary on this map. Oh, Naga has been up and down throughout this tournament bracket. Yesterday, an absolute force to be reckoned with. On Blizzard World against Obey Alliance, hey. little bit mousy, barely existing. Schroding is Genji, some might say. <laughs> we'll have to see if he is remaining on form this Friday, because he's going to have to contend with Yikwin. <laughs> Yikwin? Yikids for this. Jonah versus Sycamore. That Widow battle is going to be very important. But like you said, it's all about who can create the most space for their own team's Widowmaker. Widowmaker may determine the pace and the angles that can be held, but you can hold those angles all the more effectively if the enemy Widow is not checking for you because they're distracted by other factors. So not too, not too much interesting stuff is happening here. It's with the push here, but look at how Young and Beautiful are splitting. You're gonna see Vestola, maybe Yikwids. Look at that right side. Jonah maybe to the left. It's about starting to surround this defense. They have such a large open area. They gotta keep their eyes open. Initial halt at Rockets, Kara. He was taken down just for a few more seconds, but the Immortality was able to save him. So Exo sort of backed away in that corner while Jonah tries to find his opposition of Sycamore. You can see that information isn't really relayed at the moment, but the pressure is starting to be applied from Young and Beautiful. A little bit of a stun, Young and Beautiful forced to use the Immortality. They need healing, their tanks are getting low. And unfortunately for Exo, they lost both their DPS. Slay was able to make this winnable for the defense as Young and Beautiful get rowdy first. Kara a little bit behind and it's 
time for the blade from Yiquid. Playing and praying into those tanks. And Young and Beautiful winning that first fight will be getting pointed. And that all, that all happened off of Young and Beautiful essentially winning the poke phase by forcing out an immortality field from Slay. Just from Yiquid being in the back and making sure that he could hit the Shuriken fans. And that moment they could get aggressive thereafter. There was nothing to save Naga when he got himself caught out by Young and Beautiful's aggression. And even after the second immortality field came out from Slay, Yikids managed to get the blade just after that and then had a clear landing for himself to move into the enemy team. So this is all about Young and Beautiful having better poke at the moment and being able to manage the cooldowns that they see a little bit better next to Blivione. But now Exo still have their rally. They didn't, they weren't able to use it in the last fight, lost it too quickly. She's starting to break. So Exo really looking at them having the advantage in this one, having more resources, especially with Naga slaying Yikids into the back. Another DPS, Young and Beautiful backing away. Exo pressing further, closing up their shields. It's an ant matrix from the attack though. They see if they can catch Exo because they're too far forward. As they round that corner, Young and Beautiful are ready to fight. Kara goes down. That's a little bit less aura healing, a little bit less point healing as well. But Rennie's is going to try and get aggressive. Big hole of a supercharger too. The blade is out, Lemon, but he can't find the target. Naga is just getting rocked in the face. He deals with the supercharger and he stays alive. 14 HP though, he could use an armor pack. And with this whole team being dead, Naga is going to die on car. Young and beautiful have so much momentum. Point B, they're going to have a buttload of time for point C. And that was such a huge investment for Exo Blavione when they were in a five versus six scenario. And it seems like I've only got one fight out of Junkertown B. Not ideal. Now they're facing down a five minute time bank on C. And this can be a bit of a quagmire for attacking teams. You can get stuck in the mud quite easily. But five minutes is going to give you a lot of time. Call a tow trek. Get yourself out of the muck. Vestal's actually at the top. He got a stun on the Renane. You gotta be careful for him. If he gets a stun onto the right squishy person, Young and Beautiful can maybe pounce and get that first pick. Now, Exo don't seem too bothered. A little bit of a dash from Yikwith on that high ground. So now Exo starting to be surrounded. They're gonna try and bite back with that Gravitic Flux. Immortality keeps Young and Beautiful up. And Yikid's gonna try and slash him down as the Dragon Blade as cooldown came out. Exo with a rally that came too late. The tanks are dead and Naga's not benefiting from any of that young and beautiful fight after fight after fight looking down the barrel of point c absolute dominance right now from young and beautiful even with ex oblivione using ultimates there the gravitic flux the amplification matrix for rally none of them meant anything to yikids and his blade and the stolen now the fate of ex oblivione may rest in his hands and in gravity itself afterwards the flux is good to go Makes the Blivione all group up or they get brought together by a halt. There's going to be a lot of damage coming their way and that's going to force out an immo field from Slay. So yeah, be careful if Slay's going to use that immo early. As you said, maybe this could be a big gravitic flux. Vestola getting harassed from the high ground. Slay now is dead. He can't use immo. So now it's gravitic flux. Managa kills Vestola. He cancels the ultimate. Young and Beautiful see if they can withstand this blade from Naga. It has to be big. You have to slow down this trade from Young and Beautiful. But not enough of an impact was made. It's only a one-to-one -one trade. Young and Beautiful sticking around, but they don't have enough resources to keep it going. The Bob will shut the door on this fight. Sycamore gets two kills from beyond the grave. What am I witnessing? The direct hit from the Bob. Knocked Khan back to spawn. Jonah died to the burning of a dynamite of all things. I'm not even sure if Sycamore managed to detonate with dynamite or if it was just one that missed and exploded by itself. Either way, just the, the posthumous kills. Something that we don't really see too much of in Overwatch, but Sycamore managed to get a pair of them. And that is the lifeline that Exobliviona have hung on to here. Now with two and a half minutes left, Young Beautiful have only lost half their time and gained a lot of distance here on C. Uh, this is a weird rotation. Young and Beautiful are like at the defensive spot. There's a blade from Yiquiz and Gravitic Flux though stops him in his tracks. Immortality and Rally should be able to give him the healing he needs to keep up. And there's the dash to finish off Slay. Exo running out of healing. They're all types of disorganized. They're not playing as a team. And Young and Beautiful took advantage. And look at this time bank that they're about to finish with. Almost two minutes on the board. Exo have one chance to touch. And it's not there. Young and Beautiful look so good in map one. And that was a huge clutch from Dance there. Getting the hole onto White Noise. Bringing him down from the high ground onto equal footing with both 
well, with all of Young and Beautiful, and that allowed for a quick pick on the main tank. And without the main tank, Ace Oblivion, they kind of fell apart because they didn't really have much cover to stand behind. Rene got a really good Gravitic Flux, actually. Onto Yikids halfway through that Dragon Blade, which I don't think Yikids was uh, expecting to hit him. But unfortunately, the rest of Young and Beautiful were more than able to pick up the slack while that Dragon Blade was suspended in the air. And we're able to wipe up the rest of Ex Oblivione. I think that Dollar's getting a lot done on this Brigitte as well. Brawling out a lot, getting this unblockable damage done, piercing through the barriers with the mace, and getting these interrupting stuns as well. Can't underestimate what Brigitte brings to this composition. Uh, the stuns, the gravitic fluxes, you said exactly right. How young and beautiful are able to deal with Naga. I mean, the guy has so many blades this entire map. And how many fight wins did we see Exo get? Really one. And it was on the end of point C. And then just as quickly, in the next 30 seconds, young and beautiful rang it in for two minutes and six. So we had said that Naga was going to be a factor on the Genji, how much pressure he was able to apply. And young and beautiful realize he is the danger and they're able to deal with it. Need to see some Widow pop-offs here from Sycamore. He needs to get in Jonah's head really quickly. After an attack like that, Jonah's going to be feeling himself. And Widowmaker is a character that relies on confidence for its effectiveness. You've got to be confident enough to take the peaks. You've got to feel that you are the better Widow. Otherwise, you're going to play scared. You might make some mistakes you otherwise wouldn't do. For now, Sycamore is just going to farm up these tanks. But this does mean that while you're shooting at those tanks, you're going to be giving away your position. And that can be a risky proposition. Oh, the backup from Naga. They used uh, Sycamore the as live bait. Dip. Yeah, the Genji field diff. And look at the halt. The accretion. A lot of damage going to Young and Beautiful. Backing away smartly. Still alive. Immo Force first there from Exo. And meanwhile, not much cart progress. Young and Beautiful forced into tiny rooms. Jonah exposed himself. Sycamore could have got the shot. Jonah get a reposition as Exo. Well. Now, they control the pace of this next fight, but Young and Beautiful will have the Ant Matrix first. Rene is in their face trying to disorganize them, but the ammo keeps Young and Beautiful alive. And Exo without tanks, this is not going to look good. Sycamore's got two. The blade is out from Naga. He's found Dollar in his sights. He's going for the Arista as well. She's a chunky Omnic, but he's going to eventually cut through to the core. Exo I actually really like what Rene did as well. It may, it may have been disguised as feeding. But in actuality, Rene walking through the amplification matrix and putting down that shield meant that the other members of the team of Exoblivione could not be victims of those double damage shots coming through from the amplification matrix. And who can forget Sycamore? He's just going to punctuate my point there by winning out against Jonah. Getting two picks. Took out both Jonah and Khan during that fight. And now Sycamore is really feeling confident on this. But he's actually forced no Jonah onto the tracer swap. That's about as alpha as it gets. Yeah, the positioning here is scary from Exo. You have Sycamore here on the top right. I think I saw Naga climb into the top left window. The only beautiful are just kind of trying to keep track of all of that. And Jonas is sick of keeping track of Sycamore. He's on the tracer. Gravitic Flux gets canceled. Naga with the finishing blow onto Vistola. That's probably the second time we've seen that happen as did in the corner. Best impression of Evil Coaster. Exo just carrying the same momentum that Young and Beautiful had going into point C with a huge time bank as well. In the middle of all that mess, Sycamore got a headshot on Jonas. Says, I don't care what character you're playing, I'll still beat you in the duel. And then Yekids as well. Sycamore is unstoppable on that Widowmaker, but we'll move over onto the Ash, realizing that this is the time to go for the more AoE damage. The added utility of the Bob as a sieging mechanic in this far more difficult area to capture. But it's going to be slightly easier with Ex Oblivione uh, playing off the high ground. Supercharger available from both sides. Shield starting to go down from Young and Beautiful. The halt and the Gravitic Flux will get them low. You can see the rally from Dala. It's going to help them to stabilize a little bit on this car. But Yakiz is behind them and he has a blade. And, oh, he needs the rally. He needs healing. He did that blade with 40 HP. That was not going to be it. Naga doesn't have too much more health, but he has a rallying Brigida. That is the difference. How you're able to enable your Genji is what defines these fights. And Exo with this fight win advancing towards the end of point C. It wasn't clean, but it's for W in the end that matters, even if it is a fair victory the only thing that they're getting right now is progress and naga managing to outblade yikids killing him midway through a blade with his own that's the uh 
superior Genji play. Now we're into one fight territory right here, but Exit Oblivion only have to make sure that their three spawns come through. Rene's already so low. They need to not use the ammo field here for him. Yeah, Matrix. Just to make sure Young and Beautiful don't have any shields to contest with. A few more meters. 2.57. Young and Beautiful. It's their last chance. The time make. Doubling what Young and Beautiful have put on at the start. As Exo just regenerating their tanks. White Noise down. Not able to get into safety. Kids getting closer to play. Gravitic Flex from Vistola to slow things down. Exo running out of healers. Running out of tanks. It's not the things. This is winnable. He breaks out the play. 98 HP and a dream. Slicing away the competition. Two more meters. They just need a few more meters. And Young and Beautiful are not getting off this cart. Exo rolling back in with the Hammond. And the kills continue for Exo, which it didn't seem winnable. But they proved me wrong. One extra minute on the board for Exo. Naga sits at 50 HP, but trust is there. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to draw out the blade. I could die from one shot from an Ash. From one volley. From the... Uh, from a Baptiste, from one whip shot from the Brigata, but no. I have a faith that my team are going to cover for me. They're going to heal me up and they're going to allow me to find some damage here. That's exactly what gets done. Exoblivione brawling out very effectively. I really liked their strategy of putting down the zoning amplification matrix at the beginning, knowing that Young and Beautiful would have to come out and contest because they put a little bit of time on the cart, got it into that precarious situation. Like you kept saying, a few more meters. Young and Beautiful, they had to deny those few meters. They had to move into the line of sight of that window. And that really put them at a disadvantage in terms of the survivability of their shields, the survivability of their tanks, how long they could peek out and whether or not they had to just cower and hide without being able to fight back. I, I just still can't believe that Young and Beautiful were still able to contest for that long, despite it being like two meters away. Like they had to stay on cart the whole time. There's no disengaging. And Exo not losing a single fight in that whole attack, even when it was back and forth at the end. They held on. They blade when they think it's winnable and it works out. As it's back to the Widow duels between Jonah and Sycamore. Exactly so. Dan's already catches a headshot from Sycamore. Not really much reason to stop off the Widow when you're feeling this good about it. I like the reactive shield there from the Sigma, making sure that uh, any rock coming in towards the Hulk combo is going to be blocked. The Stone has also been playing quite well, getting some nice, uh, getting some nice gravitic clutches, but also some risky ones. I actually died through quite a few, often as a result of Naga, who wants to try and get the assassination here, potentially onto Yikid, who may not see Naga coming. I think Jonah has learned his lesson about Naga has his name and he's coming and Jonah just doesn't want to peek out. He's going to stay as close to his team as possible, but somehow he gets not uh, getting that memo. So six versus five for the defense. Young and beautiful waiting this one out, just holding their ground around this corner. And Exo not playing too aggressive from that. And this can be brutal. Now you have a scouting bonus from Naga and Sycamore. They can tell you exactly where anyone is coming from. Kara can take the 3D peak as well while having that shield out. And this is so difficult to get through. With only 52 seconds left, Young and Beautiful could be in trouble, Lemon. Especially Renee doubling that Gravitic Flux. This could be what kind of saves the defense coming up, but a dash kills him. Or actually kills Vestola. Now Renee's going to get even farther ahead. Gravitic Flux should be up for the next oh. fight. Slay is down. Not too much happening here, so they won't miss him too much. Especially Kara putting out as much healing as he has. Young and Beautiful, 30 seconds left. That's such an optimal pick, though, because now Young and Beautiful can poke until Slay gets back, and they can use their own matrix as well. Oh, Gravitic Flux and the Dragon Blade. Naga took a ton of damage, but not the full kill until now. But too little, too late. The damage has been done. Young and Beautiful, four down, have to respawn. You kids or Jonah have to be the ones to touch. Khan didn't go over onto the Lucy even after using the Amp Matrix. It's going to have to be the Stola who goes in for the touch. Actually, Yikids moves in, but he's instantly decimated. He's disintegrated and exsanguinated. At least some cooldowns to use on Yikids. You can have uh, Vestola roll around, keep that overtime wick burning one last time. Young and Beautiful have lost two. Immortality used. Adala has rally, but they don't have enough damage to puncture through these shields, especially with a supercharger from White Noise on the field. So Exo won't allow them to go any further. That was almost a round winning hit from Jonah when they shot Khan. The Brigitte really does suffer as a solo healer in the poke phase. 
obviously you've got to be in melee distance to get that inspire propped and running or you have to use the armor packs and the armor packs you only have three of them the young and beautiful they want to just have an extended poke phase there where they could force back the enemy get them low make sure that any utilities are gone before slay comes back and to try and allow for yikis to get easy cleanup afterwards with a blade picks all of you only understood but their only win condition there was to take a really quick fight when you saw they engaged with both the blade and the gravitic flux because they didn't have slay they didn't have the staying power they needed to be explosive and quickly ascertain dominance over that battle that's exactly what they did really good understanding of the opponent's win conditions and how to counter them and just how do you counter exo this just seems like their best map by far full holding smc yesterday putting on a time of three minutes and 17 and then full holding young and beautiful in the second round so this is looking very very scary if you're a young and beautiful fan three minutes and 17 box of victory halfway to point a several fights they have to withstand several blades to hope that they can get a dub here and there's a lot of time to build blades and that's a lot of time for sycamore to look for a pickamore smile <laughs> <laughs> well exit on the high ground and oh, there's no. a pickamore you're looking for there's the pickamore. <laughs> look, there's look the at naga pickamore. still playing the kind of bodyguard genji here as well knowing that yikids has to try and get a little bit of damage here onto sycamore make him feel uncomfortable with this position but Heal is always going to be there. It's going to be very difficult to take the two versus one. Jonah will return soon, at least. Got picked quite early, so they've had time to commute on back. And I like this aggression here. That was a really good pick on Rene, courtesy of Khan and a hole. Yeah, Slay focused on healing Sycamore. White Noise was low, and Rene didn't get the bulk of that healing. He's down for the moment. Exo still have tons of time, and their positioning on the cart really hasn't changed. Young and beautiful, they have to change. And it's Yip Kids trying to sneak into the back while uh, Sycamore is not poking out on the left. Still looking at this corner. This is a very doable hold. Why they've actually uh, put so many of their resources. Look, there's an Arissa here for the uh, for the Widowmaker. Naga may have Jonah dead to right. Picks up an armor pack and may get the full support to go in. Picks up the Venom Mine as well, and that's going to reveal him to the enemy. Maybe why is the poke from a back? Oh. Naga even had time to take a tea break and then finished up Jonah. Six versus five. Ant Matrix in place for the attack. And the kills continue with Khan. Places the immortality. Places the Ant Matrix. But with Naga's pressure, they're not able to really focus on winning the frontline duel. But you kids, it's going to try and make this winnable. One last Dragon Blade against Naga. Who is the better Hokage? And it seems that Exoblivione wiping out Young and Beautiful on this cart for the final fight meters away. And there is the cap. We're starting Exo on match point. I don't know what a Hokage is, Lemon, but I assume that in <laughs> this context, Naga is the superior whatever that is. Really good performance from Exobilion, especially on their counter-attack. It can be very demoralizing when you only win a single fight over the course of an entire defense, especially on a map like Junkertown, where usually you'd hope to bog down the enemy a little bit in any of the three phases. But being able to uh, be resilient stick to the plan and not worry not tilt at all in these first losers round matches is uh, a big testament to the ex oblivione mental and i think sycamore really did do a lot on that widowmaker we were wondering in previous days is sycamore's widowmaker at the level where you can consistently and reliably bring it out when it is required on maps like Rialtum and junkertown and sycamore's given us a resounding answer here and just how much room these Widowmakers have to work with also depends on the pressure of those Genjis and Naga and your kids back and forth. But it was Naga again putting on more of that. But two minutes, we have a break coming up to see where Young and Beautiful want to send us to next. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back, everybody. Ex Oblivione on match point against Young and Beautiful. Tournament lives on the line. The fight for second place. And you're like, oh, who cares about a silver medal? Hey, that's a $6,000 silver medal, okay? <laughs> a few of us would like that silver medal. It's, it's a lot of dollar dues. Like, I'm not sure how much that would be, like, in, in silver weighting. Uh, but I'm fairly sure they get delivered in dollar amounts rather than in precious metals, thankfully. I don't know if we've got medals yet either, but we'll, we'll work on the medals. Okay. Right now, though, Young and Beautiful need to work on their execution, I'm afraid. <laughs> Ex Oblivione, True. they're getting a lot of picks on Vistola midway through these gravitic fluxes, and that could be a worry. Maybe we need to see a little bit more peel a little bit more support for the Sigma during these times of vulnerability. And we don't often think of Riddick Flux as a, as a ult that gets often cancelled by anything other than a stun because of the larger health pool of Sigma. But Naga's getting it done quite consistently and maybe on King's Row that can change. This will be Young and Beautiful's choice of map. Of course, I think they played this, uh, yeah, it's any team's favorite map, Genji, Double Shield, whatever it may be. I think we're going to go more towards the Ash. Of course, Widowmaker still might be used. It's just a little bit of a smaller field to work on compared to Junkertown. And it's just something maybe Jonah's more comfortable on. But speaking of that, we did see a little bit of crap talk on Twitter between, uh, was it Naga and Jonah? Uh, Naga asking when he's going to build Bob or something like that. <laughs> Uh, he, he was referencing uh, Young and Beautiful's attack of Hollywood A against Sheer Cold, where Jonah took about three minutes to build a bob. <laughs> it, it was it was not pretty, but what was pretty afterwards was a first point fuller hold that was brought down by Young and Beautiful upon the Sheer Cold attack. So Jonah really uh, woke up after that. This is a player who deals with stress quite well. It motivates him, brings him back even stronger. He needs to be resurrected. He's like hit scan Jesus. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, go back. So, but I, just the crap top make, makes it a little bit spicy, especially when Naga was just harassing Jonah the whole time when Jonah was trying, attempting to play Widowmaker last map. But with Young and Beautiful uh, choosing this map, Exo gets to pick the side. Exo choosing to attack first. So seeing they can uh, do a blazing fast speed, as you like to say. Yeah, some blazing fast speed, but that only that only occurs yeah. if you have a a particular mileage which you break. Well, I suppose it's more of a, a speed limit which you break. I'll let you know if it's a blazing fast time. Then you worry. I, I've got my own yeah. in, internal qualification system for what does constitute a blazing fast time. We've got the symmetric rollout, of course. Which makes a little of Now I'm just going to swap over onto Genji. Standard fair going to be a mirror here between these two teams. It's going to be mostly about working in the neutral. And that is better rotations, catching people out, using poke to force cooldowns, and then making a stabbing blow with the Genji afterwards. Take a little hop down into the rooms next to the point where Young and Beautiful have the hotel side that they can keep an eye on and just rotate into. Actually, Young and Beautiful have also control of the high ground. See, Exo want to maybe dislodge that. They, want, they don't want Jonah to have any better angles than Sycamore does. Again, building that Bob for his fight can be critical. Naga somehow deals with Dala. Naga is in the back line, and Young and Beautiful haven't reacted. Where is their prioritization? The immortality's already used, and Naga's here oh, to clean dashing. up the job. This is clinical. Exo didn't lose anybody that fight. Oh, that was a disgusting blockade of Young and Beautiful right there. I like how Exoblivion also are playing the, uh, the two hit scans. Nice dance, Slay. Hey. <laughs> the two hit scans <laughs> with both the Baptiste and Sycamore on the Ash on a different high ground to where Exoblivion tanks are pushing. And then Naga was coming in from a different direction as well. And Young and Beautiful couldn't decide on one particular asset to focus on. At least choke point can be defendable here for Young and Beautiful. They can make up for that time. But can they deal with the blade? Naga has it. Immortality gonna shred those shields. Naga in the back. Young and Beautiful are weakened. And they've lost these kids. Naga still alive through all of this. Dealing with the supports. And Exo, they just made that look so easy. At least, however, Young and Beautiful are gonna get a quick stop on the cart. Try and 
cauterized for wounds, stem the bleeding. The time bank is so large, but it needs to make sure they got that fight here. They're gonna be uh, have they're gonna be able to have another fight at the end of B as well. And we're gonna be a little bit better prepared for it as well. The rally's gonna be there, the Gritic Flux as well, the blade potentially even, but Sycamore can put a thorn in their side before this engagement even happens with an early bob. I want to see Exit Oblivione go for the, uh, the Hulk Bob Dynamite combo. That does a huge amount of damage. I can force out the early immortality field. And that's going to leave Yikids low on resources when he finally gets the blade out. Um, Jonas still working on the Bob. This is the, could be the Bob that stops the car, but it's really Sycamore's Bob that's going to try and shut the door on this point. Two meters. Young and beautiful. Still haven't used any ults until now. The rally to survive the Gravitic Flux and the Blade maybe to finish the job. But you kids, they're not low enough for him to get any resets until now. Vestola with the late Gravitic Flux is the nail in the coffin for this fight potentially. And Young and beautiful now have the payload exactly where they want it. It's an unconventional combo, the blade first and then the Gravitic Flux after, but it works out in this case. Yikis manages to soften him up in the air, it's like a beautiful tap and yaki display. Into one of those vessels, they're quite nice. And now eggs Oblivione. They're going to be able to counter-strike that. Over the course of that fight, Young and Beautiful used so many ultimates, four of them in fact, both of their DPS ultimates and the Gravitic Flux and the Rally as well. This means that when White Noise puts down the Supercharger, Slade doesn't really have to worry about saving the Immortality Field for anything in particular. They can instead throw the Immortality Field in after Naga when the Blade is drawn and allow him to survive for a while longer. And then they save themselves against this Blade from Naga. It's a good rotation towards that left side. They'll have a more open area to work with if they can force Young and Beautiful into the hallway towards point B. There's the Amateur started Supercharger for Young and Beautiful, but it's the play from Naga that's trying to shine, br shine bright. Three kills, Supercharger and Immortality down. What can Naga not do? Exo with point B. Yeah, that was beautiful. Exactly as predicted. The, uh, the Immortality field was thrown long range for Naga to make sure they could stay in range of the enemies for a long time. And of course, the supercharger is very important because it gives you what we call breakpoints in Overwatch, and it's exactly like Nanoblade. The breakpoint is that you do 180 damage with the slash when you're supercharged. That means when you dash through, you can kill a 200 HP hero. The slash and dash combo is integral to the flow and power of Dragon Blade, and that's what you get. There's a Bob uh, left side there from Exo just trying to guard the cart so they can reposition. First it down, burn down from Young and Beautiful as Ant Matrix plays the defense, trying to do the same thing. The shield's still healthy from Exo, but Sycamore can't say the same thing. Immortality coming too late, not in the right place. Renee, getting close that Gravitic Flux. Might need it to fight back, oh, might no. need it to stop you kids, but he, he gets stunned. I don't even know what happened. He died of a heart attack. He, he didn't even finish the voice line, and Exo are looking down the barrel of point C. Car is popping off a Dutch Brigitte Warlord coming in the clutch there and shutting down the Yikid Blade. Bob's gonna come in from the back. They'll be quickly executed, I imagine, even with Wait. the amplification. They lost Kara though. That could be damaging later on. Naga's Blade, see if they can equalize the score going after the last support left for this defense. Dala on the Lucio will be able to get back quick, but significantly less healings available for this defense. They have closer respawns though. Dan's buying time on the Hammond. Exo backing away now that they've lost Naga, but holding on to the real estate that they do have. I think that was a, uh, a feelings blade right there from Naga. Not necessarily a great one. However, Naga now is at least a bit more free in that there's no shield bash to contend with. We've got Lucio's on both sides coming back, so no Brigitte's are on the field. The Stola is just there by himself, but he's getting all the resources. The defense are still up. They're clapping back. They've got two kills. Exo use Ant Matrix, but they can't seem to puncture through to Young and Beautiful. Closer respawns. Sycamore adding to the damage in the front line. Dance can't stall the cart any longer. Geekins is the last one. Khan trying to pocket him and Exo bringing in this payload with almost two minutes in the bank. The Bob clutch there. I, that felt like it was an overtime fight for about a minute when there were still three minutes on the clock. That went from zero to six lane pile up real quickly with the messiness <laughs> of the battle, but Sycamore clutched it out with a Bob. Bob was pushing the cart a little bit, was suppressing Yikids, was making sure that Khan couldn't get in very close, and Sycamore ensured that Yikids would have to hide away by hitting him with the dynamite as well. That tick damage cannot be reflected. Overall, Exoblivion, they can feel pretty good about this attack, and you can see that both teams kind of 
went for the fast tempo, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Once the Lucios were out, it was just speed boost forward, hard double you boys. Let's see how we do. <laughs> Did it pretty well. My books, two minutes. You saw the time bank for King's Row. And settings to good pace, getting in the minds of your opponent. Young and beautiful, it's match point for Exo. And now you have to attack and hope you don't get full held. Thankfully, this is both teams, I think, one of their favorite maps, everyone's favorite maps. So see if they can have better luck than they did on Junker Town. But it's going to be usually the Genji Ash, no surprise. But what might surprise me is how the defense or the attack interpret this first push. Who's really going to be prioritizing that high ground? You know, remember back to Ex Oblivione's push, it was kind of like a, uh, I'm not really sure what you'd call it. It was all over the place, really, but it was a calculated all over the place. They were coming in from three different angles, and Young and Beautiful, unfortunately, couldn't decide one to focus on for a six versus three, a six versus two, or a six versus one engagement, and they were eventually picked apart from all of the angles that they couldn't cover with their shields. Looks like a bit more of a brute force approach here from Young and Beautiful going through Hotel, trying to cut off any potential what? disengagements, but Jonah being down, he just so low on damage. Jono had just like his left toe outside of the door and still got sla uh, dash killed by Naga. Talk about just these micro things that will make a difference in these fights. And he's farming a blade. I mean, I just woke up two minutes ago and this guy has 70% blade. Well, it's going to be even higher very soon. And they forced out Fortify as well from Dance. He cannot very safely move forward without shield cover anymore. Forcing out that Fortify is an incredibly important ultimate. Nargus already got the play. Here he goes. Oh, good. Immortality, though, but it's quickly dealt with. Renee is by his side. Naga is getting all the armor packs and all the resources from Exo to just pop off. The way that Exo can enable Naga is a reason that he looks like a top Genji player in Contenders. And they gave him the Immortality Field again. Naga would have been dead there seven times over if not for Slay giving the Immortality Field. But that's what the pace and the tempo gives you. You know that Young and Beautiful can't strike back in a way that would be meaningful, but you'd need that Immortality Field for more than Naga. So I love that play from Ex Oblivion to support the blade. Ant Matrix could help Young and Beautiful win the Shield War at the start. It's, you see how Exo have already rounded the corner. They're in Hotel trying to hide. They've lost Kara, they've lost White Noise, and now more. Young and Beautiful just have to stabilize, get the rest of the ticks on this. Half their time bank gone, but a dub's a dub. Not too flashy. That was uh, about as close as working a team in the neutral as you can get when you're uh, using two ultimates, just having the great armor generation of a rally and the extra damage through the amplification matrix as well made it so that young and beautiful could just win out in a mechanical fight as well as a little bit of a numerical advantage being given to them but exit of they didn't use too much there the amplification matrix and the bob two very quickly generating ultimates but this next fight lemon i hope your mind is warmed up because it's going to get oh, real no. hectic with two gravitic fluxes two supercharges and two blades my vocal cords are already going to invoice me after this fight. I can already feel it. <laughs> Young and beautiful. Supercharger first, but Naga with the blade. Second, Immortality slashing away. Dealing with maybe the healers, but goes after the tanks. And two kills. Young and beautiful not getting a single one in that fight. Exo slowing things down. Oh, you would have hoped if you're young and beautiful that your kids could get slightly more off that blade. Even a single kill here when you're this far away from a defender spawn would force Ex Oblivione to give up this archway, but not losing anyone. I don't know if they can try and hold here forever now. Jonah can try and break the deadlock with a bob, maybe. And then it's Gravitic Flux versus Gravitic Flux. But once again, this could be about working in the neutral until Rene decides to bring out a Gravitic Flux. There in a pretty small hallway, Young and Beautiful will emerge, starting with the Gravitic Flux and Jonas Bob on top. And so with the Immortality, don't don't die quite yet. They're trying to get away, but Jonas Bob, Jonah with the 3K, Young and Beautiful with almost the team ace will break through the choke. So hit scan Jesus difference right there. <laughs> the double Bob kill. Not too bad, he doesn't really miss. He's, he's got some pretty perfect aim on him, and that was a really good position for it as well. But he knew that the Immortality field would be forced out and that everyone would be forced into an exposed position by the Gravitic Flux because they'd all be slammed down, they'd be rooted on the floor for a second, could get into physical cover away from that Bob. Very intelligent there from Young and Beautiful. They don't really have too many tools to make sure they can finish this. But is anyone even going to touch? 
They are. It's going to be Naga from oh. the back. Good touch. I, I can't believe he touched, but he blew up from the dynamite. And now there's a bob from Sycamore to see if they can take down the rest of Young and Beautiful. But the rally and the immortality bought Young and Beautiful so much time allowed to squeeze in that extra few meters in Exo Reset. And don't even rally use there for Young and Beautiful. This is now looking so good for them, Lemon. They're going to be able to have a supercharged blade in just a couple of moments. I don't think they're going to have time, though, as far as pacing goes, as much as keeping up the tempo goes to force out the amplification or the uh, force out the immortality field from Slay with the Gravitic Flux. So it may be about getting some good poke here, seeing where these guys are holding Naga being down. That's a great start, though. Six versus five. You kids with the blade trying to shine here. He's got one. He's trapped the rest in the pack room, but that healing won't be enough. No one else left to contest. I don't see anyone emerging from Exo. Oh, Naga got stunned. He wasn't able to touch. And two minutes and 50 on the board for Young and Beautiful. Oh, my days. Exo Blavione only got one fight out of C as well. That's an unacceptable folly on the defense. Think about how good that area is for you. If you managed to get a fight like halfway through, a point you wouldn't be able to come back with an ultimate advantage enemy would have used some of their ultimates you would have the respawns and the attrition on your side but they got wiped so late into the cart's pathway because they didn't really touch it because they couldn't get there that young and beautiful managed to essentially steal that point from out under their nose really good play for young and beautiful making sure they never used more than they needed to economically just sipping at the resources available overall very very strong play on king's row young and beautiful keep themselves on the board but one minute it's nothing to write home about the difference of one fight and depending on how long you tango for for the point is kind of negligible but it does also define who attacks and defends first which is an important factor exo looks like they're hovering over the symmetric getting to top theater and again, we've seen different interpretations of this first push. We saw Young and Beautiful prioritize Hotel. Exo liking to go to that high ground, and Jonah's ready for it. They are prepared to receive. Jonah's certainly found himself in this round. Had some huge pop-offs thus far. How goes the, uh, oh, that's that's not bad for a random dynamite. 20% ult charge, we take those. Exo could have probably could have waited for a a second or two, or had Rene put down the experimental barrier. But look at this aggression right now. They're trying to stuff them into this narrow corridor. We don't want them to be prepared whatsoever. Immortality used, knockout one HP, not able to be saved as Jonah continues to form that bob. And well, your kid's gonna get in on that action at 90% to bleed. That was such a good fight for Young and Beautiful to win. And you take those fights from the narrow corridors, Lemon, because you can get six people with the halt. Six people in the halt. Look at the uh, the dash through that comes here. How much ult charge is gained? 20% ult charge for free, 50 damage to everybody. And it means you get a dash reset off of every single a limb. And Yikids can now plunge the knife into the heart of Exobliviones attack. He's 70, maybe 60% ahead of Naga at this point. Yo, know, that fight win, that's just gonna give Young and Beautiful a huge advantage in this one. And what an early play with the halt set up, slicing through Sycamore. No immortality. One support down from Exo, trying to back away as quickly as they can. They only have 44 seconds left. And they would have wished that Young and Beautiful used more than just the blade, but Young and Beautiful are smarter than that. Exo Oblivion are gonna be wishing they didn't use the amplification matrix as well. That was their main playmaking tool, and now Khan's got a huge advantage having that available. Young and Beautiful can kite back here, knowing that Exo Oblivion have to be on the point and force them to fight in the range of the amp matrix if they like, but it looks like they're setting up to be aggressive again. You've got the Baptiste and the Ash in the back right now. You can see him on the stairwell. Naga's reported their position, and they're just gonna try and flank around. Can they even touch right now? So have to touch 10 seconds or they have to play for the draw. Young and Beautiful need this win so bad. Match point for Exo. Gravitic Flux has ready for Vestola coordinating the halt with a dance. Rally to keep Young and Beautiful healthy. Can't say the same thing about Naga. He's down mid blade. Kara with the rally can't heal the rest of the team. Young and Beautiful coming alive and denying any ticks on this point for Exo. And Young and Beautiful have finally found themselves. They've decided to take this game into their own hands. They're taking control. They're deciding the engagements, Lemon. Every time Ex Oblivion they have a plan, they get punched in the face. 
that. That's a famous saying. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, the flower power punches hard, and it punches very, very quickly. Before you even know the round's begun, it's when you're, like, doing the boxing glove high five thing. I don't know what it's called. I assume it's some kind of mutual agreement of respect <laughs> in boxing. But while that happens, young and beautiful, they just give you a flower power to the face. Remind me not to shake hands with you ever uh, for multiple <laughs> reasons, including maybe not getting sick, but the young and the restless on the attack, three minutes to get 33% to keep themselves in the series to tie it, to put either team on match point, but EXO are playing for the draw, keeping them on match point. And it's Sycamore coming out on the Widowmaker. Interesting. This is a gamble, Lemon. Question is, will it pay off? But you've got a gamble. You're up against a three minute time bank from Young and Beautiful. This means you may not be able to get as aggressive as Young and Beautiful did on their defense because you don't have the huge AOE in the narrow corridors that Jonah does with Dynamite. It's going to be about everyone moving into Second World's line of sight and generating enough attention with the main core of your team that Sycamore can go uncontested long enough to get a pick. If Sycamore doesn't get a pick, they lose. Well, how much do you care about Sycamore, though? Do you go hotel? Do you prioritize high ground and make sure he's not comfortable? Do you send the uh, kids up there, but see, just staying safe, not even going through hotel, just stepping up right on the point, thinking Sycamore doesn't have much of a presence, and so far, seems to be the case. Young and Beautiful up by two kills, six versus three. Immortality, so well placed from Khan that Young and Beautiful could play as aggressive as they wanted. The 33% in their sights, and we now have a tie series. Huge understanding there from Young and Beautiful. They see the Widowmaker, and they were gonna rotate through hotel, but like, wait. They don't have an ash. We can all stick together and there's not really a, a punishment for that in the form of a dynamite. Whereas these guys have to come onto point and Widowmaker can plink away at our shields forever if she wants. But the one person who's coming onto point, we're just going to six versus one them and we're going to do that as many times as need be until we cap this point. Really good identification of where the enemy were going to get their bread buttered, which was during the rotations when people are vulnerable, when they aren't expecting a Widowmaker shot to come through. But when you're on the point, you know basically all the angles the Widowmaker can take, and you can lock them down very successfully with a Sigma or a Ressa Barriers. Hugely happy with them bringing this series up to a 1-1. One -one. We knew this one was going to be close, Lemon, but I didn't know it was going to be this close. Still close. Here are your replays from the series so far. Two maps down the drain. Exo on Junker Town had a pretty good time. Young and Beautiful with a closer time bank too, but... It was sort of a Genji diff at the start. You could see how Jonah was constantly pressured, not able to fully focus on trying to take down Sycamore. And that box didn't go too far. Then on King's Row, I think Young and Beautiful had about a one minute better time bank, but they had the better defense in the second round, which allowed them to get the 33% and tie things up. Yeah, except we have some classic fumbles on the defense as well. We're seeing a lot better support for these blades that I'm happy to see as well. Dollar going over triple packs on your kids to make sure that it's consistently healed up and generating as much health as possible to withstand any assaults. Look at this. The immortality field coming in here for Narg. That was such a hugely clutch play. It's little things like this that really make the difference to these dragon blades and turn what would have been an absolutely eviscerated blade into one that cleans up the enemy instead. Still a super close series. I mean, one minute time make difference. Uh, EXO attacking, they look so good. Young and beautiful, keeping themselves in. It's first to two though. So that means EXO will have the choice of map coming up. And it's the Yikids Naga show where Yikids seemed quite a little bit on Junker Town, but I think as the series warmed up, you see how Young and Beautiful started to commit more to slowing down Naga. Cause if you let that beast free, He's just going to destroy everything. This is where the coach, the coaching staff really shows off their caliber. They're going to have a five minute break. They're going to be able to choose the next map, Exobliviona anyway. And uh, it's going to be down to Casores for Young and Beautiful to nail down what was making the difference in these fights and how they can continue to do that across the forthcoming maps. Personally, my money's on Rialto. I think that they want to have a Sycamore versus Jonah Widowmaker duel again, and they can try and force that on Rialto. It feels like Escort is a very good series of maps for Ex Oblivione, and I, I think they want Sycamore to be able to flex. 
Well, the winner of this match guaranteed second or third place, thousands of dollars on the line. The loser drops down to fourth place, but we'll see them again in the next tournament. We'll see you guys after this short break. Overwatch Contenders is brought to you by Take TV. Esports is coming home.
Welcome back. We have a tie series between Ex Oblivione and Young and Beautiful. The series looked a little bit sketchy, but Young and Beautiful proved they never give up. Yeah, Young and Beautiful, they are nothing if not resilient. They never go down without a fight, and they are certainly giving one to Ex Oblivione right now. But Ex Oblivione do have the enviable advantage of being able to pick our third and potentially final map. The only way that it wouldn't be a final map is if we get a draw somehow, but surely they wouldn't take us to a map that is easy to draw, like an assault map. <laughs> right, Exo? Tell me I'm right. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're hearing that Exo, during the break, decided to go with Route 66, which is something they've chosen to go against Avoided, and it's either Rialto or Route 66 is their preference, so no, no surprises in their map choice. So statistically, yes, this is going to be our final map one way or another and this map can be all about the good halts and the genji play and right now that's where exo are really getting the difference i think we're seeing some really good halts from white noise and nagra's following up on them really well but towards the end of uh of king's row we actually saw young and beautiful start to take charge of their destiny they start to play a lot more aggressively and i'd love to see that carry over here with like an aggressive spawn hold maybe one of the main detractions i have of how ex Obliviono have been playing so far is that their defenses have been very um piecemeal they haven't been able to get much value <laughs> out of the geography they have to work with they've only really got one good fight out of each payload section that they have been defending across both junkertown and king's row and honestly, you need to be trying to get two, to be honest, especially towards the end of those defensive sections. You start to have hugely long attacker spawn times that can make it a real pain. And you brought up a good point about how Young and Beautiful changed the way they initiate fights. And it started on King's Row when uh, Immortality and then he just jumped on uh, Exo as they were rotating to that top right hallway. So we want to see more of that. We want to see you kids take charge. We want to see the, yes, the rest of Young and Beautiful do that. And if you're on the defense, how you initiate on top Earls or Big Earls is is how the defense are going to control the pace of the fight. If you just let the cart push towards the end, then your backs are against the wall. So we got to see a confident Young and Beautiful in this map three. Interesting that Young and Beautiful have chosen to attack first. I wonder if they're doing that because that's what Ex Oblivione like to do. Or if that's what Young and Beautiful literally wanted in their own way. Because you, you got you to gotta weigh up the advantages, right? Of messing with the opponent's plan versus... Uh, what is best for you. And at some points, when Ex Oblivione are like counting on being able to attack first because most teams would choose to defend first, you can sort of throw a spanner in the work. Ex Oblivione gonna have a little bit of a forward hold here. We're gonna quickly disengage, of course. They're in a very safe position, but once they get some poke done, they can move on to the top of big girls. Jonah was playing with me for a moment, just wanted to Sonic Arrow one of the train cars, make sure there was no Genji lurking in there for a little bit of a backline assassination. It's gonna be back to the mirror. All of these loaded kits, very difficult to deny. It's important to see not only if someone's lurking there, but who, and quickly halted down to the ground. Naga is in the back line, 30% to the blade. Immortality used early from both teams. A dance is low, but you can see the train just doesn't stop rolling. If you're young and beautiful, a clean fight win, not losing a single person in this first one. I think that Slay is breaking a little bit early, losing the nerve on these immortality fields. And it means that once they see that, Young and Beautiful essentially have to destroy it, and then they have free reign to use their own. And during that time when they've got the Immortality Field advantage, that's when they can really slay Ex Oblivione. And once again, it's okay. Oh, they are going to get a second defense. Thank God. Uh, Why not? He's trying to poke his forehead out. Force legs taken at the knees. Young and Beautiful at least knew exactly where they were coming from. Easy fight win. More ult charge. But Exo, because they took that fight, do they even have time to set up on the high ground as they would want? Oh, I thought we were going to get a little bit more out of that fight, but Young and Beautiful, very good at their target selection, making sure the second anyone even poked in to take a look, say, hey, what's going on over here, guys? There was a bullet between the eyes, courtesy of Jonah and Khan, and they didn't have to invest any ultimates in that last fight. So right now, they have a commanding advantage over Exo Bloviene. If they don't cap B in the next two fights, it will be a ludicrous fumble. And just EXO, like I said, don't have the high ground control. Young and Beautiful can build probably Bob this fight. 
trying to emerge out of that left doorway. Dynamite above them, and so is he kids with the blade. Oh, Coach Gun, ball, but smart. swatted the fly down. Her shots and young and beautiful. Well, read that like a book. Again, only dropping Khan, and that's the first death they've had so far. Rookie error there from Sycamore. Pushing themselves up into the air where it's all free for your kids to dash up after them and nowhere near where the immortality field can afflict you. Young and Beautiful used three ultimates in that fight, but they still have the supercharger to generate more. They have the Gravitic Flux, they have the Rally. Ex Bovioni counting on a huge blade here from Naga. Gravitic Flux, but Rene got so close to dying. That could have been cancelled. They're trying to hold their ground. Responding Gravitic Flux. You can't really see the targets, but all that matters is Kara has Rally. Trying to keep the defense up one last time. Young and beautiful. The cart. Point B is in their sights. And they're continuously playing with this advantage that Exo just can't seem to break as the Bob reinforces the defense only momentarily. But the healing from Kara seems to be proving that the defense can fight this one back in Young and Beautiful without their DPS players. It's, this is so back and forth, but Exo eventually will fall. When it comes to the Brawl, the Stola is the one you've got to take out. That Sigma does huge amounts of damage, and even with the return on the Desperation Tracer. There it is. Those are the two fights I wanted from Young and Beautiful. They've secured themselves a 4 minute 40 second time bank. 4 point C here. This is where the defense starts to get quite difficult. Or rather, this is where the attack starts to get quite difficult. The defense have some really good areas to play with here. Have to see how aggressive they can get. Obviously, you want to be getting the two fights out of it. That's what I continuously admonish Ex Oblivione for, and stopping the cart here is a good beginning. And they try to go from behind, and the Dragon Blade, well, it's putting more damage than Exo were anticipating this start to start with. Not looking good if you're an Exo fan. Four minutes and young and beautiful breakthrough, a pretty difficult part of point C. Sycamore's decided to go for the McCree now. I wonder if they're going to swap back over without the blade threat. Nope, they're sticking with the McCree. Okay, interesting. The additional stun. Look at Khan and uh, General on the right-hand side there. There's going to be so much damage coming in from the right. Oh, no. Yeah, Rene got his ult cancelled due to the death. Time? Young and beautiful with so many ult slips. Supercharger, rally everything they need. Exo, just a 90% to a bunch of ultimates, including the Naga Blade that came in way too late. That is an enormous time bank for Young and Beautiful. That is mind-boggling. I'm somewhat convinced right now that Young and Beautiful spent Junker Town just downloading all the information on Ex Oblivione. They, they had to install it, they had to download it, and we figured it out. But I'm not willing to count out Ex Oblivione yet. They came back from a face slap on the Junker Town attack of Young and Beautiful. And if I'm honest, neither of these teams has really put up impressive defensive performances. But that's what happens when you, uh, when Genji's one of the primary characters, much better at grabbing those assassinations, you know? It just feels like such a yup yab moment right now of Young and Beautiful. But you've just been yup yabbed. Not... Yeah, it just, Junker Town, man, didn't look too hot, didn't look too steamy. And, and then yup yab happened and then they look like they're about to take two maps in a row i i don't want to jinx it but that's a huge time bank to have on a map like this ex oblivione would have got away with it on point b as well if it weren't for vestola and his meddling hyperspheres <laughs> really channeling the yabba dabba do <laughs> oh i hate, I hate myself <laughs> <laughs> self loathing comes in many forms children <laughs> Well, hopefully they love this attack, Exo. Nothing surprising compositionally. No, no a Jonas Sonic arrow or a similar thing happening. They don't really care who's in the top left. Want to see White Noise go for a halt? Or maybe Dance is going to do it. But either way, Young and Beautiful still have control of that top left. Pretty good halts here from Dance. Really have been a difference maker, I think, in these engagements. I think White Noise is getting really good oh. mid-game halts. And that's a pause, so it means that I've got time to deal with my point. I think that... White Noise is getting superior sort of like chaotic mid-fight halts that really help to enable Naga's blades. Whereas I think that Dan's is really commanding the engagements a lot more effectively with the halts. And that's allowing for opening picks and it's forcing resources out of Ex Oblivione before the brawl begins. And that means that they've consistently got an advantage in those areas.
But I still just need to set so much momentum at the start. I mean, Young and Beautiful point A was just so easy. Just racking it in within the first two fights. And EXO, you just need them to step up on this defense. You see a split from top Earls to the cave. And I think this could they can just get a little bit more ult charge from these funny angle positionings. This could how they can just slow down this momentum, get a first fight win, and then just work the ult economy in their favor. He he funny angles did work out from quite well on their King's Row <laughs> attack. Uh, we're going to be getting yeah. straight back into the game, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, the time for overtalk is over. The time for Naga Shuriken fans is now. But it may be delayed slightly because Slay and White Noise have been absolutely eviscerated. Yeah, Renee. Gonna, uh, gonna die. And I was gonna say the rest nice might want to back out. Dolo was like 1 HP and Dance is low. So, so maybe if they can spawn quick enough. They can get some space on this car. Young and Beautiful are going to wait for Dance to get back. Solid Sigma diff right now. The Stellar almost double the ultimate charge of Rene after brawling out in that fight. Knows exactly where to put these hyperspheres for maximum AoE damage. Maximum ultimate charge as well. This could lead to a very quick engage from Young and Beautiful where they open up with the Blade and the Flux. The quick Blade and Mortality de dealt with pretty quickly and Young and Beautiful still healthy. All the focus went into the Vestola instead of Yikids. He barely really got low. And Exo, think what? this is winnable. A lot of people are missing and Naga was like 30 HP. What was he thinking? But Exo, this is still winnable because Kara and Naga work together. As a single more Bob is summoned on the field. Two versus two and an Immortality left over. Exo somehow walked away with that fight. Exo are falling apart though. They just used four ultimates for that fight in what well, I think was a 3v3 scenario. Young and beautiful, if they can re-engage here, they've got such a huge advantage. They need to take this fight. You need to take this with, with the supercharger. Use every ult you have, young and beautiful, because if Exo will be only lose here, they are done. There's a critic plus at Vestola. Can use immortality is used so early just to get the defense on this cart. Supercharger, Dala down, so much less healing available for the defense. And the Gravitic Flux does a lot of favors. They're able to follow up with it with the assassinations on the DPS players of EXO. And they will be backing away just when they thought point A was in their sights. The kid's gonna manage to escape from the uh, foreign days of Slay. And she managed to take him down as well. But yeah, that was uh, that was a huge investment from Ex Oblivion. I think potentially an overinvestment for Mavic Young and Beautiful. They knew they could come in with their triple ultimate and just be like, yeah, we win, by the way. Cuba Watch is coming in strong. White Noise still hasn't got the first uh still hasn't got the first supercharger here. I need to be seeing more damage out of the Arissa. Dance had it twice as fast as he did. And you're down to the last minute when Young and Beautiful got this within the first fight. They're already behind in time. And there's no guarantee this fight is even a win. Look at the old difference. There's a blade from Yikids. He's going to whip it out. He's looking for targets. They're all grouped up. The Immortality, he gets stunned. But the Immortality plays from Khan. Make sure that he can continue the steamroll that is Young and Beautiful. Very happy to see that immortality field there from Khan. Big brain and allowed for your kids to survive that long enough for the immortality field of the enemy to go down. It's weird when you say immortality twice in the same sentence. Quite a rare word, but this is the Overwatch era we are living in. Ex Oblivione. Loaded for bear. The armory has had some emergency replenishment and it's do or die now. They could leave the tournament in fourth place in the next 16 seconds, Lemon. Such a good ant matrix. This is gonna just cut down the shields before Exo can even set up. They're forced to go through cave. They have their own. Maybe Young and Beautiful disengage from top Earls. The bomb isn't gonna do much. Exo, it has to be now. Supercharger white noise. You gotta find a moment. Now Naga can use the blade with all the all the help he gets. Gravitic Blood Supercharger Naga only walks away with two kills. Young and Beautiful with a rally. They're still healthy, but not as many members remain. Six versus four for the attack, and the job has been complete. Exo are still in this. I would critique the alt economy of going for the Blade, the Supercharger, and the Gravitic Flux at the same time, but I understand Ex Oblivione's mental right now. They actually have no physical way of getting a larger time bank than Young and Beautiful. Maybe even if for, in 10 seconds, if a cart teleported to the end, they would have the same time bank as Young and Beautiful. If it just teleported to the end through the entire map and no one touched it, they would have a lesser time bank from Young and Beautiful. So this is a very stressful situation 
for the Eggs Oblivion a team. And they've only got a Bob to try and deal with this next fight as well. Young and Beautiful can take this at their leisure. Just all your life savings were used if you're young, if you're Exo. At least the Bob did something, but you're two down. At the start of this fight, Young and Beautiful survived for so long in the immortality that wasn't dealt with. You see Naga harassing sort of by himself. I think maybe Renee is there, still gets a double kill, which will slow down the defense, but won't do anything for the attack. Wait, still a, still a minor engagement coming through. They're hunting for Naga. You can see how low his health is in the UI, but no, okay. Manages to get healed up, possibly picked up and make a health back. Good survival instincts right there. The Stella's going to take a while to come back, but Rene has also managed to catch up on Gravitic Flux Charge due to his contribution in that battle. That's a huge dynamite. That's going to be a lot of damage. You got to wait for the full six. The shields were ready. Kara halted and the dynamite. And that's a huge source of healing for Exo. And Rene being down, you're getting booped off the map. This is just, this is a mental boom that we're seeing from Exo. Thanks for the ult charge, loser. Signed dollar 2020. <laughs> Resetting people. Ah, now look how aggressive they're getting. They want to use the Gravitic Flux and the Blade, I imagine. They want this tight area so they can use the Immortality Field. And they bob from the other side as well. There's no escape. Are they stuck in Naga the cave? The but Naga might be stuck behind them. He's got the blade. He's got a lot of targets. Are they weak enough? The oh, no, oh, the bomb is still there. Bodyguarding. That was, that was not an ideal blade. I'm trying to be nice here. That, that was uh, that was a blade with high hopes, low expectations. And unfortunately, <laughs> the expectations weren't out over the hopes. Sycamore's moved over onto the McCree this time. Seems like this really is a comfort pick for Sycamore at this point. Coming through the caves, Naga's actually playing on his own on the other side. This means that he's going to be able to get the touch. Guarantee that overtime while the rest of the team concentrate on superior positioning. Six seconds, young and beautiful, and Exo on match point. The ticket to the second place match is in their sights. And Kara with the rally can't save his team. It's two down for Exo, now three. Dan's only one shield remains from young and beautiful, but the job is done. The overtime wick is going away, and so are the hopes of Exo, who started this series 1 0. Oh, young and beautiful flip the tables, they flip the odds. They're going up against Obey Alliance. Stamping their tickets to the second place match and guaranteeing a fat stack more moolah in their pockets and the mental resilience to do that after Junkertown as well. Really impressive here from the side of Young and Beautiful. I'm very, very impressed by them. Ex Oblivion, they had such a huge advantage. They got the 1 0. They won out on Junkertown. They got to pick our final map as well, but they, they just got punched in the head so hard by Young and Beautiful <laughs> on their attacks. The defenses of Ex Oblivione have been their downfall of the course of today, it seems like. Even on Junkertown, where they won, there was they still got capped on Junkertown with two minutes in the bank. I'm not sure if they are taking these defensive fights adequately in this particular meta. I... That's just such a yup yap thing to happen. Like, Axo just looked like the better team. They were the fa almost the favorite team coming in. You even heard from the British Hurricane interview that they thought Exo was going to win just because Exo are just copying her what Hurricane are doing, and they're doing pretty well. I mean, Hurricane are a champion for a reason. And it started off pretty good on Junkertown. And, and somehow, Young and Beautiful woken up, mainly Yikids, was able to be enabled so much more. And I think Khan has to be a top player that I've been giving so much credit. The immortalities that have been able to buy the crucial seconds for Yab to extend those fights, to be able to take the kills were so big. Yeah, it's, it's all about the momentum of these battles. And it's so important to be able to take command of that. But... To get a real insight into what's happening in our games right here, we've got ourselves an interview. We've got the wonderful and handsome Jonah, the hit scan of Young and Beautiful. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. My first question is, is that you had some choice words against another fellow player <laughs> from EXO. How does it feel to be taking the win against them? And do you have any final words to Naga? Uh, I mean... I think Naga and also like Wayfast were on Angry Titans at the start of last season. And we used to like teabag them and play troll comps and scrims <laughs> against them and stuff. So I think that's why he doesn't like me so much. Um, but you know, uh, he, he got, the, got some big words, but then, uh, you know, if you gotta talk the talk, then you gotta walk the walk, you know? 
Big words, yeah. little blade. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Okay, Jonah. So I, I want to talk about the Young and Beautiful mental as a team. Because uh, yesterday was difficult. Today was also difficult at points, especially on Junkertown. What is it that gives Young and Beautiful such a resilient mental to never tilt and always be able to come back? You guys have like the ultimate underdog buff. Uh, I honestly feel like it's kind of the opposite way that when the match starts, people are not talking, people are not really trying. And then when it gets close, people start actively doing their best and then we get rolling. Uh, same for me, like on Junker, uh, like into my brains out into Sycamore. And I credit him, he's, he's nasty on Widow, right? But uh, I don't know. I guess it, it takes a bit of pressure to like really uh, start playing your best, you know? This at least gives some uh, this gives some <laughs> credence to my theory. I said that you need to die before you come back more powerful. I called you hit. Yeah, we're, we're zo the, the zombie <laughs> others for sure, man. Yeah. Back from the grave, but yeah. you guys worked so well as a team, able to bounce back from whatever was the first map. But was there a particular uh, player on your team that you thought really popped off today and really just kept their cool? I think everyone, man, in between dance, just mid-fight calling and always kind of being that confident pillar in the team between Yik just being fucking mechanically absurd on Genji and just, I mean, same for IB, or, like he doesn't get to play Zen now, so he doesn't frag out as much, but this guy, is, I, I've never seen someone with such clean mechanics on flex support. Uh, and same for Dola, like uh, for Solas, they're all so insane and uh, I I. I like all of them did so much and it would be impossible to pick one person. Uh, Kasor is also between the maps, just kind of telling people to shut the fuck up and start doing their best, you know? Uh, <laughs> those are his exact words, I am assured. Yes, those are lit <laughs> that's literally what he says. Uh, but in a friendly way, you know? Kasor is like the yeah. dad of the team, in a sense. He, he's got that, got that real gangster vibe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, intimidating yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But he's, he always lets us talk and we want to talk, you know, he's not kind of, he's not the coach that just uh, oppresses his will. He's more kind of like, uh, like a really good mediator, if that makes sense. Uh, and it's just great quality to have as a coach. Speaking of mediation, you guys kind of lost a lot of the, the mediation of your attacks when you were trying to defend Kings Rover second time. What really flipped for you guys between the first and second round of Kings Rover? You guys decided, okay, we're, we're done waiting for them. We just, I mean, we, we just, uh, or well, some of us are like, we just noticed that like when we were attacking the first time uh, or wait, did we attack first or defend first in the very beginning? I think we defended first, right? Like at the start? I think when we defended first, we noticed that they yeah. like just splitting and then kind of just collapsing from multiple angles. And if you stand still, it's quite good. But if you start realizing it and just punish them, you they're really free. Uh, like some fights, uh, Sikamore would just hard flank behind us. And then if you're standing still, it's really good, right? But you're pushing away from that person that person doesn't do much and and so we just kind of made an adaptation uh throughout the map where we said okay just just push push and and if they keep splitting they'll they'll keep losing and speaking of adaptations obey alliance was the team that put you in the losers bracket and now this is your upcoming opponent for a chance at second place six thousand dollars on the line what is going to be different between your first encounter with them and the match coming up um honestly like when we went into the match with obey we were mega boomed from a scrim we did the night before <laughs> where uh, we got hard rolled by a team that was playing aggressively into us and we were kind of playing like slow and pokey and we were hard boomed and didn't know how to play at all in the in our official and we just kind of were in this kind of like twilight zone between styles and uh, obey just played better right but i think now we kind of started to find our flow and uh, should be pretty uh, free well, we wish you the best of luck in securing those fat stacks for second place against Obey Alliance. And uh, uh, if Albion is watching, uh, get your team to play Grand Final, bro. 3-0, uh, Hurricane, easy. Just come. Play us. <laughs> play us. Scum? Unofficial. Play us. Unofficial uh, Grand Don't Final. Don't care about the money. Uh, just play us. All right. Well, we'll make it happen. Thanks so much for the interview, Jonah. No problem. Good luck. Oh, guys, that was Jonah from Young and Beautiful. They 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 cannot be slain. They, they get punched in the head, 
and they come back with a dent in their head and even more angry. They're like the incredible Hulk of Overwatch Contenders Europe, and they're going to be getting even angrier for the next match, so do not go anywhere. We're going to give them a quick rest, but then they're going to be going up against Obey Academy to go up to second place. We'll see you then. Overwatch Contenders is brought to you by Take TV. Esports is coming home.